Cheers, eh? Christ, where's that from? It's Granny's old socks. The I.O. will point you up to town headquarters for a briefing now. Oh, right, sir. Come then, Matt. Thank you. Morning, sir. Good morning, Phil Brock. Ted up. Come in. Set yourselves down. I've got a job for you. To examine your map, and it's our photograph, I'll explain the ground. You'll recognize this is our battle group area here, and the river Vase are here. This, of course, is the enemy-dominated area. B Company have found tracks leading from the river, suggesting two men have come across. Also, a home door with snorkels and face masks. They may be snipers, saboteurs, or some sort of recce party. B Company have made a sweep for them with no luck but it's fairly reasonable to assume they're still on our side of the river. Mission. Your mission will be to kill the enemy before they can get back across the river with any information. Your mission will be to kill the enemy before they can get back across the river with any information. Execution. From an examination of the ground, I want you to select a good position from which you can cover the enemy when they try to get back across the river. Take up your positions approximately here. Take all the advice you can get from the OC of 7 platoon. You'll find he's got an extremely good knowledge of the area. I think that's all. Now to service support. You better take rations for at least 72 hours. After the IO's briefing, we collected our equipment, camouflaged our faces and hands, <laughs> courtesy of Max Factor, and donned our ghillie suits. <laughs> yes. We do look a bit like a Sergeant Major's nightmare when we're gillied up. No two of us look the same because everyone has their own ideas of what makes the best camouflage and what clothes are best to wear. The old camouflage smock with the crotch strap is favorite because it doesn't ride up when you're crawling backwards. Then we went up to join the OC of 7 platoon in his OP, which overlooked the area in which we were going to operate. Corporal oh, Brox. Oh, yes, I've been expecting you. The mission is to eliminate two enemy old infiltrators before they get back across the river, sir. Yeah. And I'd like some help from you on the possible location of a hide. Uh, yes, I'd but... like to be able to cover as much of this stretch of the river as I can here. Yeah. We're um, just here at the moment, in fact, in the OP. Fine. You can always get more information by using maps and air photographs together. Recent air photographs give you a much more up-to-date picture of the ground, and they show seasonal changes in the vegetation, width of rivers and so on. There's something there, sir, that looks very much like a ditch. Do you know anything about that? Yes, there is a ditch along there. I've had a patrol in that area. It's dry and deep enough to give you good cover. Yes, I think that's probably the route we'll take then, sir. I'll just have a look at that. to uh, give us some cover while we're digging the hide. Sir. The OC of 7 platoon was going to provide us with a protection party while we dug our hide. So as soon as I tied up arrangements with him, we went forward to make a daylight recce and to choose the best possible position for our hide. I checked the map for the reference points I'd noted in the OP. Do you notice I've got hessian wrapped around my hands? Some people wear thin gloves. It's not only for camouflage, but it also protects your knuckles when you're crawling through thorns and nettles or, or over rough ground. A 
I saw that we were about halfway across the open ground we had to cross to reach the ditch. Yes, there was the ditch, about another hundred yards and we'd be there. The ditch would lead us to the wooded area that sloped down to the river. We don't talk much on a stalk. You get so you and your partner can understand each other without it. He's automatically changing the garnish in our headdresses from nettles to grass, because he knows that that's the cover we'll crawl through next. Stalking is a long, slow business. One of the tests you have to pass before you can become a sniper involves getting to within 200 meters of a group of trained observers and firing two shots at them without being seen, even when your position is pointed out to them by someone who's standing next to you. It's not enough just to be a good shot. Right now, we're moving pretty fast as we're still fairly near our own positions. Any risks that are taken must be taken early. At last, we'd reached the ditch. Deep, plenty of cover, and dry. All the time we're on a stalk, we keep a lookout for any material which might be useful when we come to build our hide. At the end of the ditch, there was a track I hadn't noticed it on the air photographs. It seemed to be in dead ground, so I decided we must take a chance and make a dash for it. My mate covered me while I crossed. Once we were under cover of the wood, we moved forward more quickly until I came to a point where I had to choose the location for the hide. tree over there, for instance. It's in the right position, but it's useless because it's so conspicuous. Your eye is drawn to it. Now, the leading edge of that wood would be better. Yes, anywhere along there, as long as it's possible to camouflage, has a good field of fire over the objective and isn't too obvious. A bank or a cutting or a hedgerow would have done just as well. Choosing where to build the hide is largely common sense and practice. This is it. There's the section of river we have to watch. That's an ideal spot for our hide. Finding somewhere to hide the spoil where it won't be conspicuous is just as important. Under cover of a wood, a hedgerow, plowed field, those sort of places. Once we've agreed the site of the hide and where we'll conceal the spoil, we crawl forward to peg the hide out. Even though we're under cover of trees, we take this last part of the stalk very slowly indeed. We can't afford to make a mistake now. Sometimes we move only a few feet in a minute. I check each arc of fire and stick in pegs, or I might use a compass bearing for the left and right of arcs and for the center axis of the hive. So when we return later tonight, we'll know the exact spot where we're to build it, and we'll be facing in the right direction. It isn't always easy to remember exact bearings in the dark. stalk back. We've got to be just as careful going back as coming out. 
even though all we want is to tuck into what might be our last good meal for days. You feel better after that? Yeah. Are we going to use that corrugated iron we saw for the roof? Oh, some of it, yes. We mustn't uh, use that bit that was in the open. They'd notice that if that disappeared. We use some of that timber to shore the uh, the roof up as well. It'll be pretty difficult digging over there. I don't know. We'll have the lads from B Company to help us. They can carry the spoil. Give us a bit of protection while we dig the hide as well. Good. You check the batteries on the IWS, Mark. Yep. And the radio. The radio's okay. All right. I can't think of anything else. Let's get moving. After our meal, we made a final check of our equipment and then RV'd with the protection party from 7th Platoon. I checked with them the route we would take out to the site of our hide. As soon as it was dark, we set out, using the appropriate formations to cross open ground or the closer country which would give us cover near the river. Meanwhile, the GPMG that I'd asked for to cover the sound of our digging opened up. We crawled the last leg up to the position I'd selected for the hide, and then we started to dig. Compo tins are excellent for lining the loopholes of a hide, but make sure they're kept well back so that reflections off them don't give the game away. the hide was being dug and the spoil carried away and hidden, one of the protection party kept watch through the IWS alongside the man on the GPMG. Basically, a hide is made from a hole dug in the ground, with a roof to keep out the rain and thick enough to keep out shrapnel as well. Enough cover in front to stop a bullet, and a couple of holes to shoot through, but small enough to make it difficult for the enemy to do the same. And when you're in a hide for more than a few hours, like we're going to be, you want room to move about, to brew up, lie down, answer the calls of nature without having to go out. Remember, you're under the eyes of the enemy all the time during daylight. Is the entrance secure? Entrance secure. Right, well, let's get these out. It was still dark when we entered the hide, so as soon as the entrance was secure, I checked our arc of observation through the IWS. We set the radio set up. Okay. Normally, one thing you can never do when you build a hide is to nip out front and take a look at it from the enemy's point of view to make sure the camouflage is okay. Of course, if you, if you have to go out front for any reason, check it. Otherwise, you have to know it's right and work damn hard to make it so. Well, that's good. <coughs> we can cover the whole area pretty well. All right, let's get this range card filled out. Okay. <coughs> Axis bearing. Six, two, zero, zero mils. Reference point. A large tree. Range. About 500 meters. Our first job was using the map and air photograph, your partner plots the reference point and its range on the range card. In fact, the range is 450. Right, plot it then. Other reference points and their ranges are plotted throughout the range.